Considering the fervor with which the game of cricket is followed in the Indian subcontinent, one wonders if it is a religion than a mere sport. Hello, I'm Swagata and welcome to CT 93FM. In today's podcast, we take a walkthrough of a section of Biju Parmeshwaran's sizable bookshelf, his collection of cricket books to be precise. Camera and editing are by Deepa Biju. Enjoy the trip. The radio commentary of India's cricket tour of Pakistan in 1978 was my introduction to the game. I also happened to see clips of cricket matches during newsreels at cinema theatres. And in 1982, I had my first exposure to cricket on television. Now the 1978 tour was memorable as it was uh, Kapil Dev's debut series. He was just 20 years old and he went on to become a legend in Indian and world cricket as we know. Books have held a fascination for me. So when I combined these two interests of books and cricket, it was logical that I took to cricket books. It all started with uh, Sujit Mukherjee's book about Indian domestic cricket between Indian wickets. And uh, very soon I was reading the Indian captain, Sunil Gavaskar's extremely readable, delightful books like uh, his autobiography Sunny Days, Idols about some favorite cricketers, One Day Wonders, Runs and Ruins, etc. The next captain, Kapil Dev, of course, needed a ghost writer to write his autobiography. And now these books uh, like Prasanna's autobiography and those of Patil, Nawab of Patodi, Zahir Abbas. These are light reads that I enjoyed during my uh, long train travels while working in Bombay in 1994-95 period. Uh, these were quite handy to carry, you know, what I would call pocket-sized books. Mohindra Amarnath was one of my favorite cricketers for his sheer bravery in standing up to the pace of uh, West Indian cooks. And Gary Sobers, definitely the greatest all-rounder ever. Bishan and Patodi. These are books by my favorite cricket journalist Suresh Menon. Uh, Shadows Across the Playing Field is a book that I very keenly awaited and bought. It's written by Shashi Tharoor and the former Foreign Secretary of Pakistan, Sharia Khan. And there's a book by Khan alone, uh, which is again about uh, cricket in Pakistan. Ramachandra Guha is definitely a great cricketing brain. Uh, and then these are somewhat intellectual uh, exercises, the one by Ashish Nandi uh, examining the, the, the philosophy, the psychology of cricket. Akash Chopra was not the greatest of Indian batsmen, but he certainly is a fantastic writer. And his account of uh, the way he was part of Delhi's uh, rise to the top of the Rinji Trophy and also they're winning the Dulip Trophy the same year called Beyond the Blues is one of the best books on the game to have come out of India. I also have here a book by my friend in uh, South Carolina, Mr. Shailesh Radha. He's an avid uh, quiz buff and uh, trivia collector. So this is a trivia book on Test cricket. CLR James is a mighty intellectual from the West Indies, a Marxist thinker and also a great commentator on the game. Now these are books of a more technical nature, The Art of Fast Bowling by Dennis Lilly and On Cricket in General by Douglas Jardine of the Body Lane fame.
The work took me to Melbourne, Australia in 2006 and uh, one of the first uh, buys of mine was uh, the then recently retired Steve Vos autobiography Out of My Comfort Zone. It's a weighty tome, nearly 800 pages, but nevertheless a very interesting read and an account of the glorious period in Australian cricket history. One of the charms of cricket is the trivia associated with the game. So there are enough books on interesting anecdotes from all over the cricketing world and I have a few books where these are beautifully captured. I was fortunate to meet a few former test cricketers while in uh, Australia and uh, remarkable among them are Dean Jones, probably one of the greatest one day players ever. Then Jeff Thompson who in the 70s was the fastest hurler of the red cherry on planet earth. Then there was uh, Max Walker who was as good a footballer as he was a cricketer and also architect and television personality. Another person I met was Merv Hughes of the Mustache, the burly fast bowler who once took a hat-trick, spread over two innings and three overs. The wildest test by cricket journalist Ray Robinson should count as one of the best books on the game. It uh, captures the experiences of some righteous uh, matches from all over the world. But the way it is written makes it a very riveting read indeed. Greg Chappell, Dennis Lilly and Rodney Marsh. Greats in three departments of the game. Uh, and they were contemporaries. In fact, I remember they, all three of them retired in the same test match against Pakistan in 1984. In fact, the Chappell era is about the three Chappell brothers, Ian, Greg and uh, Trevor. Arguably the greatest bowler that ever lived, Shane Vaughan from Melbourne claims not to have read a single book. However, he had at the time when I met him uh, for an autograph, some 13 books to his name, all goes written of course. Merv Hughes's book has got nothing to do with cricket, but another passion of his, which is deep sea fishing. Let me introduce you to a cricket novel. The name is Chinaman and the author is a Sri Lankan called Shehan Karunathilage. It won critical acclaim and a couple of awards. Uh, the book talks about a fictional cricketer, a spin bowler called Pradeep Matthew, who is believed to have played for his nation in the 80s for a while and then was largely forgotten. And now a sports writer, a retired sports writer who is heavily alcoholic, investigates into the life of Pradeep, who he believes was the greatest cricketer that ever lived. And in this wonderful narrative, we are also led into uh, a fine depiction of Sri Lanka in this turbulent period of the 80s and the 90s. The history, the culture, the politics, the cricket, the undercurrents of Sri Lankan cricket mixed with politics. It's a heady read indeed. So this is a book not to be missed by people who love books on cricket. World Cricket Digest was a fantastic read in the 80s and uh, almost all the issues seem like collectibles. I do retain a few of them.
it was in australia that i attended cricket test matches the first one was uh, 2006 boxing day test at uh, melbourne and uh, this was an ashes match it will always be remembered as the one in which shane warne became the first player ever to take 700 wickets uh, the os is one with a day to spare I will always cherish the moment when I saw a Sachin Tendulkar test century in the flesh. This happened in Jan 2008 in Sydney. It was a amazing test match which uh, saw a lot of runs being scored from either side. But then bad umpiring on the final day especially cost India the match. I have always been a test cricket man. The enormous possibilities of the long form of the game have enchanted me. ODIs are still okay, but I don't particularly dig T20 and other uh, shortened versions. IPL with its uh, outsourced patriotism also I find uh, rather Uh, an unholy dilution of the game maybe that's just me and uh, in today's age when we are hard pressed for time the game itself seems like a bit of a luxury The British cricket writer and music critic Sir Neville Cardus once said We remember not the scores and the results in after years it is the men who remain in our minds in our imagination
You are watching Cricket Nostalgia with Biju Parmeshwaran, a CT 93 FM presentation.